Hi, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to have all of you here for, for the ResciGo Seven Minutes of Science. My name is Guo Xinjin, and I am a PhD student doing research on image processing. So what I'm doing is I'm making compressor. Today, it's, it's, it's much easier to get visual data. You can watch your high dimension TV shows at home. You can enjoy the buff uh, stream video from laptop. And taking, uh, well, every second, millions of pictures are taken by smartphones and uploaded to the social network. Compressure take very important part in all of these things, and you may not notice that. But if there's no compressor, most of the time you will see this. <laughs> because data, visual data is huge. For example, an hour uh, high definition uh, video will, will cost more than one terabyte. Which means if you want to download that using ADSL, that will take you 10 days, uh, sorry, five days. If you wish to pay more, you still need a couple of hours. This is too long to wait, right? So that's why we need a compressor. A compressor or a compression algorithm is a software, not this. A <laughs> software which reduces the size of data but maintain a level of quality. Uh, well, sorry. For a powerful, uh, a powerful uh, uh, video compressor can reduce the size of, of, of video a hundred times smaller. But there's no free kick. Compressure may introduce ugly distortions called artifacts. There are some examples. You may be familiar with blocking artifacts. Sometimes you'll see blurred image. Other times you'll see the edge are duplicated. We call that ghost artifacts. All of those distortions are bad. And one of the reasons, I think the worst one, is because the compressor use a pixel by pixel uh, kind of um, difference measurement to measure the quality, which is inconsistent to the human vision system. Let me, let's do a simple experiment. There are three pairs of images. If I ask a human like you, tell me which pair is most similar, and most likely you will see the C pair will be similar, and this A pair is not is the most dissimilar. But if you a compressor use a pixel by pixel kind of measurement to measure the quality, it will tell you that just the opposite. This pair will be the most similar one, but this pair will be the most dissimilar. So this suggests me an idea. I can make a better compressor by uh, have a better measurement like what humans do and also explore the natural world. Human, uh, you, you may not know that your eyes are just a small part of a human vision system. The most important part is on the back of your brain called vertex V1. And studies showing that human brain is a very slow system and the capacity is quite limited. But the visual data is huge. So there must be a mechanism that reduces the data size and grab the information. And yes, it's like a compressor. So if we can try to make the compressor do every step as human brain do, then mystery accomplished. However, until today, we don't know how human brain do that. So, we own, what, what we have is only a hint, and this hint can be shown in the next experiment. I show a picture of, of a prime called Baboon. He's beautiful but dangerous. And then <laughs> I show another picture of the Baboon. The question is, do you notice any difference? Of course not, because I asked that, right? But the question <laughs> is, do you notice the difference? If I flick backwards of these two images, you will notice that, oh, it's the same, it's the same baboon with different hairstyle, right? 
Actually, the, if you measure that pixel by pixel, there are 20% difference. But you don't see that. And if one of the picture is an original one and another one is a compressed version, the compressor will tell you that the compressed version is 20% worse than the, than the original. But human eyes do not, we human do not think this is different. So we call this structurally similar. To, and this kind of structurally similar is everywhere in the world. Take a look at this picture, it's a forest. Human eyes of human vision system do not observe each tree or leaf in this image. We see just the whole forest, right? So every part of the, well, any part of the, this image is similar to the other part. That, which means if you take a block, a patch from somewhere of the image and replace it by another part, this is still a similar or same forest. This inspired me, inspired me to do a compression like that. And the, the idea is just like fixing the carpet. So if some part of my carpet goes wrong, I identify that go to the store, find a match. And then I take the patch back and replace that by myself, right? So in the coding scenario, suppose the image as the whole, as the entire carpet, and I identify the, the uh, patch T, which I want to compress. Then I find a match C somewhere in the original coded region. And I use C to replace T, simple. Right? It's for, simple for human, but it's really hard for compression. There are three challenges. First, how do you think, how do you know they are similar? Second, if they are similar, how quickly you can find the match? And if you find the match, finally, how do you replace that? My research is just try to solve these three problems. For the first one, we design an experiment. We show pairs of images to the human subjects and ask them, give me a score from zero to one. One is most similar and zero is, most, is the dis dissimilar. After collecting a lot of data, we got a curve like this. So if the two patches are different, the score is definitely slow, definitely low, close to, to zero, right? But there are great variations. Because humans do not care about how different they are, they just want to tell me they are different, right? But if the images are close or similar, the curve is more or less uh, converged and monotonic, like this part. There is a threshold of this. Beyond this point, or the number 0 0.8, 0 0.9, these two patches are similar. We want to have this kind of thing we call the metric in the compressor. So we're using those data we collect as ground truth and build a metric either by heuristic way or using machine learning. And then embed that in the, in the compressor and ask compressor, compression to do the uh, measure the difference by using this kind of metric. Once we find that, uh, we, once we have this uh, metric, then we have to treat the replacing problem. There are two kind of dis distortions maybe happen after re replacement. The first one we call the illumination discontinuity, which means uh, take a look at these two images. If you tile them together, you will see the left one is much brighter than the right one. A lighting correction algorithm can fix that and the result will look like this one. Another problem is you may have a spatial discontinuity. You, human eye can easily distinguish this kind of gap. So the idea is you try to find a seam and then quilt them. It's called a quilting algorithm. When everything is done, I have a result like this. Every block in, inside the red and green boundary is a replaced block. Uh, block. Block size may be different, different. And the boundary is not a straight line because I use the blending algorithm. Different colors means different stage of blending. It doesn't matter. So the important thing is more than 50% of the image is, re is replaced 
by the already coded region, which means every block, I only need few bits to indicate where and how I find those similarity patches. I hope in the near future, uh, by using my algorithm, you can just pay $30 and watch $150 show at your home. Thank you. <laughs>